This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. We turn now to the growing calls for a ceasefire in Gaza, coming from lawmakers in Washington. On Monday, Democratic Senator Jeff Merkley of Oregon became the second senator to demand a ceasefire, joining Dick Durbin of Illinois. According to one count, 42 members of Congress have now called for a ceasefire or cessation of hostilities in Israel and occupied Palestine. We're joined now by Democratic Congress member Becca Ballant of Vermont. Last week, she became the first Jewish member of Congress to call for a ceasefire. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Congress Member Ballant. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Talk about why you've made this decision. Um, your senator from Vermont, Bernie Sanders, is not there yet, but you are. Talk about why. So, I want to be really clear, Amy, with, with folks who are, are listening and, and watching that I wrote the op-ed um, to express to Vermonters, it was really geared towards my constituents. And uh, I should have anticipated that it might get uh, national attention, but I, I actually didn't. Uh, so I, I wrote it for Vermonters. And what I wanted to do was really give voice to all the things that I'd been feeling and thinking and wrestling with uh, since the beginning of October and wanted to articulate clearly for Vermonters what I thought needed to happen. So you know, wanted to just lay it out there. The horrific violence has to stop. Hostages must be released. We have to end the suffering in Gaza. Palestinians and Israelis both deserve safety and security. And, and now more than ever, I believe that we need a true negotiated ceasefire to get to uh, a two-state solution. And as you, as you mentioned, um, my, uh, both my senators here in Vermont have, have not yet made the call. But I know in my conversations with them that we, we actually want the same things. Where we differ is just in the strategy that is needed to get us there. But we all want to find a way to stop the violence, to stop the bombing. Uh, we don't want to continue to see innocent civilians, including so many children and babies, die. And um, I just felt that it was really important for me to articulate clearly for Vermonters um, all of the complexity I was holding. And I honestly, when we released the op-ed, I was very focused on how my constituents would feel about what I said. And I didn't anticipate that I was uh, the first Jewish member of Congress uh, to call specifically for a negotiated ceasefire, because I know we've been saying a lot of the same things for weeks. So um, what I do know is there are no exact words right now that will um, sum up the totality of what we are all thinking and feeling about this situation. But I do know that we have complete agreement on an immediate cessation of hostilities, pausing the violence, ending the suffering, and trying to get to a negotiated ceasefire that will hold. And Representative, you, you said that you and uh, Representative Rashid Talib have been brought together by your people suffering and are now friends. Could you talk about the vitriol directed toward her as the only Palestinian yeah. congresswoman? Yes, I really appreciate the question. It's disgusting. The Islamophobia right now is completely and totally um, out of control. And I was disgusted by the fact that um, colleagues are, are trying to go after the one Palestinian American member of Congress. And, and as I said, you know, Rashida and I became friends early on in my tenure. We were brought together, I think, by, um, we, we both have big hearts and um, she's known a little bit like a mama bear in, in the caucus. She um, is very uh, loving and gentle towards, um, you know, specifically new members, like making sure we have what we need. And I was really drawn to her because we are, as I said, two people that have people you know within our family that have endured suffering over a very long time we're both parents to teenagers and, and we share uh, the struggles of that and and actually um, I don't think it's betraying a trust to say um, you know she sent me uh, a message last week saying uh, what she hopes is that in the future she and I will be able to uh, walk together in um, you know in in a a, a true democratic, Palestine and and in Israel, 
both of us together as friends, as people who understand uh, the horrific suffering that is going on right now. And um, I have really tried to use my platform and will continue to do so to stand up against the Islamophobia and also the anti-Semitism. And, and we've discussed this as well, that you can be critical of Israel and you should be critical of Israel and Netanyahu and the policies. And I've never shied away from that. And I also am very uncomfortable in this moment by some of the, the outrageous uh, anti-Semitism hurled at Jewish members of Congress, specifically progressive Jewish members of Congress who are trying to do the right thing and figuring out uh, the correct strategy going forward. But, you know, Rashida will always be um, what I call one of my heart people. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org slash give.